I'm gonna find out how much cash we can earn mining Bitcoin on a Raspberry Pi using this new Antminer USB stick. I'll also outline how to use this to perform lotto mining, and we'll determine what the odds of winning a block reward actually are, and how that compares to, say, playing the lottery, and how some lucky miners are hitting it big using this method. Now, this is a Bitmain Antminer U2 V1.2 SHA-256 Bitcoin miner. Say that five times fast. And it's a piece of hardware designed to do only two things things. Look cool and run the SHA-256 hashing algorithm, which is the algo used to mine most cryptos. You gotta love how this thing is basically one big heat sink. Now, there's two ways to use this for crypto mining. One is to join a mining pool and get paid for the hash power that you're able to provide to the network. This is great because you don't need to worry about hitting block rewards. Basically, the pool will dole out payouts in a metered fashion that is directly proportional to the amount of hash power you're able to contribute. To do this, we need to join a mining pool and for this video, I'm gonna use a service called NiceHash. All we need to do is set up an account on our computer. Okay, so this is gonna be our mining dashboard. So once we have our script running and we're actually mining on our hardware, it's gonna show up here as an active worker and it's gonna provide us metrics about like the hash rate and payouts and things like that. So let's go over to mining right here and set this up. So we're gonna to go to download miner or add ASIC. In our case, it's add an ASIC. We're gonna do stratum generator, right? Cause we're gonna use the stratum pool and for the algorithm, we want SHA-256. That's what Bitcoin uses. And then we have to give our worker a password. Next, we need to install a package to execute the hash function on our Raspberry Pi. In this case, I'm gonna use a package called CG Miner, which is open source and runs on all major operating systems. So now we need to actually run the miner on our Raspberry Pi. So we're just gonna SSH into it using SSH Pi at Raspberry Pi dot local. I'm gonna elevate myself to root and then I'm gonna go to the root directory. All right, so first we want to install a text editor. So I'm going to do apt get install vim. You could use nano or emacs though if you want. And then we're going to install cg miner. So we're going to do apt get install cg miner. Once this is download, we'll just want to set up a configuration file that tells cg miner what pool we want to connect to and provide our worker details. So we're going to go vim pools. Uh, we're gonna throw this JSON object in here. And what you'll notice is this URL here came from the worker that we set up in NiceHash, right? And then the username comes from here and then the password comes from here and save this. Next, we can go ahead and start up the mining script. So we're running this user bin CG miner script and we're passing it our configuration so it knows where to attribute the mining to. All right, and so you can see it did detect our USB drive here. We can see it's beginning to create a hash rate. And as soon as I kick off the mining script, we're gonna notice green LEDs showing up on our Antminer USB stick. And that just serves to indicate that it's successfully mining. And if we go over to nice hash, we can see our worker is now online and connected to the pool. Okay, and we can see now there is an active rig going, right, one active rig. Another thing to note is that this thing gets extremely hot. I actually just shut this down and I can barely touch it right now. That's how hot it gets. And that's also why there's just such a big heat sink on this thing. The only caveat with this method is that Bitcoin mining is really competitive. And when I let this thing run for 24 hours, I wasn't able to get any shares submitted. It seems like there's a threshold needed in order to be recognized by the pool and to be able to submit good shares. And even though I was generating two to three giga hash per second, it wasn't enough to get good shares submitted. And for those who don't have a good sense for hash rate, basically any computer that can perform math operations can generate hashes. And a hash is the process of transforming any given string of characters into another value. When we mine crypto, what we're really doing is searching for a number whose SHA-256 hash starts with a certain number of leading zeros. And the Bitcoin network modulates the numbers of leading zeros required based on the current number of miners, such that a new block is generated on average every 10 minutes. When more computers come online, the network increases the difficulty by adding more leading zeros. And there's no way to gain the system. The only way to find that number is through brute force random trial and error. And this is why the more hashes you can generate, the greater your odds of finding the correct answer. Now, in another video of mine, I mined a privacy token called Monero using the quad core CPUs built right into the Raspberry Pi. And in that exercise, my hash rate was about 10 hashes per second. So for comparison, this Antminer USB stick can generate about 
about 2 billion hashes per second. So basically, this thing is 200 million times more powerful than just using the Raspberry Pi quad-core CPUs. So I bought this guy off eBay and it ran me about $120. Additionally, you'll want to be mindful of power consumption. And this guy has a draw just shy of 3 watts. But as always, you could even offset the power cost by utilizing solar or hydroelectricity with an off-grid mining rig, which I've actually done before in a video that you can check out here. But given that we weren't able to meaningfully contribute to the mining pool, the better alternative to mine crypto with something like this is to do what's called solo or lotto mining. This means you're trying to find the correct hash all by yourself. It's an all or nothing proposition. If you never find a block, you never receive any reward. But if you do find a block, you get the current block reward, which as of shooting this video is 6.25 Bitcoin, which is just over $100,000. And this isn't just theoretical. This has actually happened before. So you can see this one lucky solo miner who had a USB mining rig woke up up to find that he had hit one of the blocks and received over $200,000. So it has happened before and you can check out the rig that he was using here. For you to make this work, you need to download and run a full Bitcoin node on your device, and then you can run a miner against your node. This strategy is very much akin to playing the lottery. By solo mining, you are entering into a lottery whereby your chance of winning is a function of the hash rate you represent relative to the rest of the network's hash power. So if I go over to solochance.com and enter in my stats, I can get a better feel for the odds of hitting a block reward. So I went ahead and entered the three giga hash that I was seeing when I was running my miner. And according to this, our odds each day of hitting the next block are about one in 650 million. So are those odds better than playing the actual lottery? Well, I looked at the Florida State Lottery and it looks like to win $100,000, there is a game that has one in three million odds of winning. It looks like you'd have a better chance of winning the real lottery. 